being really anxious and stressed about an open day. I don't know how to choose different medical schools. I don't know where I'm gonna be spending the next five or six years of my life. I don't know what questions to ask. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Yusuf and I'm an Oxford medical student. So in this video, we're gonna be speaking to our top TAM tutors on our top tips for open days on how to make the most out of it, what questions to ask so ultimately we can help you to decide which medical school you're gonna to go to. Ultimately, it's the most important decision you're gonna make, second only to why do you wanna do medicine? So deciding on your medical schools is so difficult and we're here to help you with that process. So without further ado, let's get into it. One of the most important things to identify at a medical school open day is the type of teaching that our university uses. This tends to fall into one of three main categories, traditional, problem-based or case-based learning. Traditional courses tend to be very lecture heavy and you can find this at universities such as Oxford and Cambridge. This tends to give you a very comprehensive overview of the content that you need to know, but unfortunately it can be a bit boring sitting through a lot of lectures, and that's just not for everyone. Problem-based learning tends to involve small group teaching sessions supervised by a senior staff member, and these tend to involve being asked to research and present some sort of problem, and then discuss it within your group. This can be a lot more engaging than lectures, but unfortunately it can also lead to gaps in your knowledge, which you'll then have to fill in in your own time. Case-based learning is similar to problem-based learning, uh, but it involves a specific case scenario, which is what drives your learning objectives. Now, it's important to note that every university is going to use some blend of lectures and small group teaching, but some will place a greater emphasis on one or the other, and that's the sort of thing you should be talking to students about at open days. It's also important to consider the fact that some courses have much earlier clinical exposure than others. So, for example, some universities will have you in a hospital from the very first day of your course, while some, you might not see it until the fourth year of your course, for example. So that's another thing to consider and ask about on your open day. Choosing the right course structure for you is probably the second most important decision you'll make in your medicine application journey. The first is going to be why being a doctor slash why medicine, do I really want to do it? And the second, as we said, is all going to be about course structure and teaching style. So ultimately, what you want to consider is what are semesters like? How long are term times? what placements are like, where will you be placed? And also you wanna be thinking about what's going to be available for you in terms of an intercalated degree. Is it compulsory? Is it voluntary? So an intercalated degree is an extra degree that you can do on top of the five years of medicine. And that's why some degrees are five years and others are six years. Is that something that's compulsory at that university? Is it not? What options are available? For example, with Oxford, you can only do a medical science topic for your intercalated degree. Whereas at other universities, you can actually intercalate whatever you want. It could be in law, it could be in engineering, it could be in business and management, for example. So have a look at the variety that's available in terms of your intercalated degree. Another very important question to ask at your university open days would be to inquire about the academic requirements in terms of your A-level grades, your GCSE requirements, and maybe the UCAT exam requirements as well. Different universities might have different cutoff grades, so it would be very important to inquire about that particular university. Moreover, it's also extremely important to ask about any additional examinations or additional tests that they might want you to undergo. Those could be specific skills tests or they might consist of a roles and responsibilities form that you might have to complete. For medical school applications, the non-academic requirements tend to be equally important to the academic requirements and therefore at open days most medical schools will put on some sort of talk about the application process in which they'll likely mention the sort of volunteering, work experience and shadowing that they look upon favourably. If you're a bit further away from applying to medical school, you should use this as a chance to work out what sort of experiences you should be seeking out in the future. Whereas, if you're a bit closer to your application cycle, you should use this as a chance to work out what exactly to be putting in to your personal statement. Either way, you might get a chance to also speak to some of the staff and students about what sort of experience they recommend getting on a personal level. Overall, the point of this is to get an idea of what sort of stuff to focus on when you ultimately submit your personal statement. Open days are also a useful time to find out about competition ratios. So the ratio of how many students apply to that particular university for medicine and how many students get accepted. These ratios can give you a good idea of how competitive the application process for that university is. Additionally, you can look at statistics of successful applicants, including what the average UCAT or BMAT score was and so on. This can give you a better idea of whether you think you're going to get into that university or not. And this is especially important because you can only apply to four medical schools. So make the most out of those four applications. For international students, it's also really important to find out how many places they have for international students specifically. So Oxford, for example, just has eight places. And even if you have a very impressive application, 
being one of it is very, very hard. So the odds, unfortunately, are not in your favor. If you want help to stay ahead of the crowd and beat those competition ratios, make sure to check out our online work experience course that is absolutely free. We have over 50 anonymized patient case studies ranging from oncology to GP, surgery, and public health. So make sure to check it out today. Link in the description box below. So I think when you're on an open day, Something that I'd really encourage you to ask is about the general life that a student leads at that particular medical school. If you ask about the placements that a student goes on and the respective hospitals, you can gauge how much you would enjoy it there. And then also asking about the campus, for instance, can help you understand how much of a fit you may be for that medical school. As much as you read about a medical school online, you're never gonna get a very realistic overview of what it's like to be a student there unless you speak to some existing students about their daily routine. So this should involve questions such as, what time do you wake up? How much free time do you have? How long do you spend in the library every day? And now obviously the answers to these questions are gonna vary from person to person. So ideally you should ask as many people as you can to try and get an average overview of the day-to-day -day routine that you would have as a student there. And from this, you can start to work out this is something that would suit you. Now don't try to underestimate the effects of small factors, which people often forget about, such as how long the commute is to the medical school or the hospital because even these small differences really add up over time and can have a major effect on your experience as a medical student. There will be loads of medical students at your, the open days that you can speak to to get their insights and to get their top tips. Ultimately, it's the reason why we've created this medical student compilation series to give you that diversity of thoughts from our top tutors from across the UK to give our own individual viewpoints and we all vary and that's really good to get that diversity of thought. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out our medicine personal statement tips video as well as our UCAT tips video, both of which are compilational videos and are going to be extremely popular. So don't miss out. Have a look at them after you finish this video. Something that I think a lot of students forget to ask on an open day um, which is actually quite valuable to ask about, is the cost of living. Students tend to get most of their income from their student loan and asking a student how they feel about how much student loan they've got compared to how much it costs to live in that city uh, at that medical school um, is something that is really useful knowledge to, to have when you're deciding where you want to go for your five or six years. A university open day is a fantastic chance to get a look at the accommodation that will be available to you. So this will be either private accommodation or university-owned accommodation. With university-owned accommodation, most medical schools will allow you to stay in halls for at least the first year of your course, if not longer. This is usually a relatively cost-efficient option, and it's a great chance to meet other fellow students and get better integrated into university life. On the open day, you might get a chance to actually look around this accommodation and find out about the locations and pricing. The location is particularly important because it's going to dictate a lot of your day-to-day -day life. So it's worth looking at your course structure for the first year and finding out where you'll need to be most of the time. For example, if a lot of your first year is lecture-based, having accommodation that's close to a lecture theatre is going to make a lot of sense, rather than one that is actually close to the hospital. In addition, you might be offered private accommodation, so it's a good chance to learn about the price difference between private and university accommodation. A final thing to consider is whether your university is a campus uni. If everything is within a small campus, it probably makes sense to be living on or close to the campus, whereas if your university is spread across a city, the location might not be quite as important as if it was a campus. An open day is a really good opportunity for you to explore both the university campus as well as the city or town that you will be based in. So it's a good idea to check out what the university's facilities are, including the library, lecture theater, classrooms, dissection rooms, if they offer dissections, laboratories, and clinical skills labs. It's also a good idea to check out the space around campus. Do you feel safe there? What's the commute like? Are there train stations or bus stations close by? Is it vibrant? And so on. For me, when I visited the King's campus and saw that they had an entire museum that students had full access to that have pathological specimens dating back to the Egyptian civilization, I knew that King's was the place for me. Along with that, I've always known that I want to live in a city and seeing the hustle and bustle in London made me sure of my choice to apply to King's. Open days are also a fantastic chance to find out about extracurriculars, including clubs, societies, and other activities open to medical students. Many of these will be organized by the student body itself, known as the MedSoc, who will organize teams all the way from football to quiz. Although, of course, this will vary from student body to student body. These teams often have training sessions and will even compete in local leagues, so it might be worth inquiring about that as well, as well as the level of commitment that will be required to be a part of these teams. For those of you who are more keen and would perhaps want to compete even on a university level, it's also important to inquire about the training 
and the level of commitment required there to see if you'll be able to fit it around your day-to-day -day teaching because being in a hospital can be quite restrictive and prevent you from going to certain training sessions. All right, guys, so that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and leave a like. It's the best way of letting us know that you're enjoying these videos. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.